So, uh... Um... Yeah, of course we're getting a recommendation for all that. And we get 165 BP. A jobs completed, and our recommendation. Wait a second. Why didn't the achievement for getting max BP pop up? Guess what? There's one more side quest left in the game. No, we did not miss anything. There's actually one thing we have left to do. It's a bit of a troll move. Before that... We are finally seniors. So yeah, his line is different depending on what rank you got. And now we have shiny new Senior Bracer Emblems. Everyone's clapping without even moving their arms, but oh well. Unfortunately, only the braces are here to see this. Ah, <laughs> uh, agate. Still Sundere. <laughs> yeah, work is about to get a lot busier. And now we're not tied to any one particular region. We can go pretty much anywhere we want. Yeah, the Royal Army was in such a mess after all that, that Cassius has to come out of retirement just to reform everything. And true. Without Cassius to hog the spotlight, it means that we're all free to actually get recognition. But yeah, it also means the Bracer Guild will not have Cassius to rely on in the second game. Seriously, we lost her in there. Oh. Yeah, there were quite a few loose ends to tie up. Ariel was, it wasn't there. It 
seems like we only broke the first layer of security on that thing. Yeah, he has no idea how or why he came to know about those ruins. And we still haven't found the culprit behind the missing memories. Okay. That's a start. Why am I not surprised? I'm going to have a heart attack and die if not surprise. Of course there was more to him than there seemed. Uh, that depends on how good your drawing skills are. <laughs> Joshua doesn't actually know that. There's still some loose ends with Joshua's past that we haven't, haven't resolved yet, and I'm sure Lawrence is the key to those. But before that, it's time to have fun at the festival, and take care of one last side quest. Getting to sleep in the castle again, nice. And Estelle and Joshua don't get to room together. So wacky hijinks will not ensue. I just, I love Cassius because just for how incredibly overpowered he is in story and for being a living legend, like, he's just a completely goofy dad, it's great. And he's also pretty similar to Estelle personality-wise when it comes down to it. Oh yeah, all that stuff about his military history that he never told his daughter. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Josh was exactly into that kind of thing. So that rest area. About the rest area. When Estelle says that we should make that our last stop, take her advice to heart. Going to the rest area will end the game, so make sure you've taken care of everything before you do that. Also, you can get everyone's reactions to um, finding out the intelligence division was doing all that. We can go back into the castle, and there's something that you actually want to do here. You want to go to the bar. Because here's Olivier. Why am I not surprised that he's here? He finally gets to experience the castle. <laughs> he
He probably gets to banquets he's invited to several days early. <laughs> Um, that, that would have been interesting. <laughs> Let me guess, before you started singing, Mueller came and dragged you off. Okay, that's, that's a new line to add to my list of favourite Joshua quotes. <laughs> so you actually want to talk to him twice here. Um, thing is, you talked to him right in front of us. We kind of overheard you. It's just something to note that whenever Olivier gets kind of defensive, he dials up his clown Kukulander tendencies up to 11. So, yeah, that's a bit of an indicator that we might have actually hit a nerve there somehow. <laughs> So once you talk to Olivier twice, I forget if you have to talk to him or if you um or if you can just go to the guild um first. But back at the okay, before we go back to the guild though, Oh, you bet it is. So yeah, these are actually the two that uh, got together all the way back in Roland at the start of the game. It's, it's actually really nice to see their story come full circle. So now that we've spoken to Olivier at the castle, if we go back to the guild... And yeah, we have uh, this music playing and the celebration is in full swing. Well, that was a very fast child running past there. Most of the people here are just uh, generic visitors, quote unquote, but there are some people that we know from earlier in the adventure. I'll be showing them later, but first to the guild. Because if we go here, we'll notice. Where is it? There we go. The Embassy Mission. I would like someone to find and detain one blonde haired, self proclaimed musician wearing a white coat who is thought to be arriving in the Royal City by Eventide today. Client Mueller. Yep, we all know what that entails. So there's only one thing you have to do for this mission. Go back to Olivier and talk to him again. Yeah, nobody else matches that description. Fortunately, you don't have to walk all the way back. I love how Stella is doing this entire quest. Uh, 
Uh, Olivier, we actually said they were male earlier. Is your memory really that selective? And so, enter the kitten. And there he goes. I almost imagine that oh no being yelled like in the tone of James from Team Rocket. And a bit of a hand wave as to why this still gets listed in our Junior Bracer notebook. So this mission is actually worth a few things to us. Yep, three achievements in one. Completing all Bracer quests, uh, compl getting all BP, and one achievement in its own right just for this quest, because it's a little obscure. And more reminding of where we need to go eventually. There anyone else in the guild? I don't think there is. No. While we're here though, we want to talk to Elnan because he's going to explain some things about Jester, that Jaeger call that we asked him to check up on earlier. Outskirts of Erebonia, okay then. Which outskirts though? Erebonia is pretty big. The outskirts that are near Laburl or the ones that are near Calvard? Hmm. An entire mercenary group just up and vanishes. Yeah, Estelle says it. There's obviously something going on here. But I'm sure we'd know if those people ended up merging with the Intelligence Division. Maybe some more people in the Intelligence Division know, and will be willing to talk during interrogations. Okay, that's interesting. Huh. Wonder if that's Olivier. Not sure he's exactly cut out to be an ambassador, but still. Yeah, well, fortunately, that's entirely off the table now. Thanks to us. So, Chloe, yeah. Chloe should consider herself very lucky. So, at this point, we don't actually have to do anything else. 
But there are some old friends that we can check in with if we go around the city, and I want to go ahead and do that. So firstly, at the cafe, we have uh, Agate and Zin. Unfortunately, I don't think they'll be holding one of those for at least another year. Agate versus Zin, that would be an interesting matchup. I'm not sure if very many things float his boat. Well, uh, as of now, they haven't even done a trilogy, or I think it's just going to be a duology in Calvard yet, so... <laughs> but considering what things end up happening in the Erebonia arc, I can't even think to imagine how they'd escalate that in Calvard. Looking forward to it, though. Yeah, Sharon might be an interesting opponent to face. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to actually see a friendly sparring match between us and Zin. <laughs> and of course, everyone in town's reacting to uh, Colonel Richard being arrested. Not a lot of people can really believe it. Also up here we have two other braces. Grant definitely helped out in that fight though. Distracting the others at the gate of the castle. <laughs> yeah, there aren't a lot of junior braces that we actually meet during this game, but uh, Estelle and Joshua are certainly pretty accomplished for juniors. How will you say that now? We took on Richard pretty easily without his help. Yeah, we've got a lot of ranks to ascend through. Yeah, how is your memory loss doing? Oh, well, of course. Of course you don't remember the one most important piece of the entire thing. Now, I believe Zin has something different to say if you talk to him twice. Uh, also, if you've missed any food in Grand Cell, I think, yeah, you can still get it now. So, um, yeah, that's uh, a good chance to catch up on recipes. And outside the weapon shop is Murano from Bows. She's still as shrewd of a merchant as ever. There's a few more people to meet inside the Fisherman's Guild too. Mia yeah, Klaus is here. Yeah, that would definitely be relaxing. By the way, we'll actually be seeing more fishing in the second game. Fishing got a little bit more in depth there. I wonder if the Zeiss Central Factory could design some high-powered fishing rods. And while we're here, there's someone waiting for us at the gates of the city. I still really like Mayor Maybell. Again, it's not often that you see just a business-minded individual um, and a politician at the same time depicted pretty much entirely sympathetically. Yeah, certainly. Considering LeBurl just had a coup, we should be pretty careful right now. <laughs> What's got you wanting to go now?
And now let's head over to the West Block, where there are a few people that we can talk to. Um, let's let's go ahead and check in with General Morgan's granddaughter while we're here. Well, he kind of did, but oh, she took the words out of her mouth. It was just in a twisted way. Yeah, that is true. He definitely did have nobility to him, he was just going about it wrong. And hopefully we can. Ah, oh, sadly, Morgan's not here. I kind of wish he was. It would be nice to see the family reunited. So at the church, there's someone else we know. It's Julia! She's also finally in her uh, real uniform in public. There have been a lot of people who were surprised that Julia was not a party member, but... Let's just say... Don't lose hope just yet. At the coffee shop... We can meet Professor Russell and Tita. Yeah, I'd imagine that, uh, I mean, I'm sure that Russell yelled at Agate quite a lot. Wow, he was really that considerate? Ah, uh, male Sundares. <laughs> Kinda reminds me of Felix in a way. Guess when there are no junior braces for him to boss around, he gets a lot nicer. And it's great to see Tita's fine after all this. Yes, ice cream is good. It got me through a lot of the final dungeon. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure Agate would not. <laughs> yeah, you would definitely get the Agate is not able to make it message if you attempted to do that. <laughs> I can just imagine Agate just, just slowly licking it and just having this weird expression on his face being like, why am I doing this? And there's actually a really funny piece of dialogue uh, in the Lebel News Service. The Fulitzer Prize! <laughs> and yeah, the localizers injected a little bit of fourth wall into this one, but... I wanted to make sure to show this conversation. <laughs> Is Niall here, by the way? Yeah, he is! Oh yeah, by the way, that? We actually can buy that! That's the reason why we're missing the Liberal News achievements. I'll get that later. You know, that's probably for the best. After all, Amalfi is still out there, so... Wouldn't want to draw too much attention to ourselves right now. And you can't go into the sewers anymore, so if you miss any chests down there, tough luck. Now, there's actually an NPC story in this chapter that I never showed any of, but I do really like it and I would want to at least show the end. So, this actually kind of has some repercussions in the sequel, if you remember that conversation. But basically, it's a really nice set of dialogue. Um, you're led to believe that um, that guy's wife is leaving him because um, 
uh, basically the husband is really obsessed with fishing, and um, then during the chapter, if you keep talking to him, you find out that his wife has um, has disappeared for a large period of time, and then it turns out that she was actually practicing fishing so she could enjoy uh, his hobby with him. It's it's kind of nice. And here's Dean Collins, or Headmaster Collins, as Mabel called him. I'm pretty sure that, I don't know if that was a mistranslation or not, but anyway. Here's Chloe and her friends. Obviously wanted to check in with them when all was said and done. Wonder how many people in Grand Cell recognize her in that uniform. <laughs> Well, if you're a princess who's a party member in an RPG, you generally have to act pretty unprincessy. You seriously, you you're the real helpful one here. You've been amazing. Not to mention comfort. Yeah, I really like Chloe. Her friendship with the party was really nice to see. Don't worry, we'll be seeing a lot more of her in the second game too. And Jill's here. So yeah, I kind of spoiled this earlier, but I think this is about all of you learning this. Jill and Hans knew about Chloe all along. <laughs> well, I guess they're gonna have to write the sequel to that play. Ruby Knight Julius and uh, and uh, Sapphire Knight Oscar versus a giant robot. Okay, we've actually seen most of the people that I wanted to show here. So I do want to show the airport though, because there are a couple of people at the airport that we've actually met earlier. And uh, I say couple, and I mean it in more ways than one. I know they're somewhere around here. I recognize that uniform. Yep, it's Private Brahm, who we held back in Zeiss. You know, the messenger of love request? Yeah, turns out they did reconcile in the end. And yet more people being shipper on deck. How are you doing, Faye? Of course, she's more concerned with the airship. And there's a huge queue for ice cream. Uh, making a lot of money with ice cream reminds me of that trick, um... Well, I mean, you know, the ice cream trick in this game, but there's also an infinite money trick with ice cream in uh, Pokemon Black and White. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was joking back then. Oh yeah, that he'd explain his entire backstory. <laughs> Estelle is certainly being very demanding about buying Joshua some ice cream. So yeah, the last place we'll need to meet people is here, inside the Adel department store. In here, I believe, there is... Yep, some of the braces. Hi there, Annalise.
even though this is yet another plus one to the shipper on deck count, I, I still really, really like Annalise. <laughs> She's great. And we will be seeing more of her later. And hi there, Kana. Yeah, it, it's just kind of annoying. It, it's hard for, for her to live down the fact that she got knocked out by those Intelligence Division soldiers when they were escorting the Matron. But I guess she's still pretty, um... She's still a pretty decent bracer, I suppose. I'm so sorry, Kana. I didn't expect to see you here. I'm sure bracer work keeps you busy. Well, that sounds really nice. Actually, remember that line! Like, that just suddenly hit me when I was reading it. So, while we're here, we can go ahead and buy Le Burl News Special. And why not read it while we're here? And we get the achievement Worldly Reader, because we've read all of them. Breaking Story, Coup d'etat forwarded. Okay, that's 19 pages, this is going to be pretty long. Rest Wing Her Majesty the Queen. Yesterday at noon, a group comprised mostly of bracers and members of the Royal Guard stormed Grand Cell Castle. After rescuing Her Majesty, who had been placed under house arrest by the Intelligence Division, uh, they must be feeling so relieved to finally be allowed to print that, said group suppressed the Special Operations Unit of that division, thereby liberating the Royal Castle. ID Commanding Officer Colonel Richard, as well as other high-ranking officers involved, were placed under arrest and charged with attempting to incite a coup d'etat. In this issue, I intend to make a full account of the hidden truth behind this string of incidents. Message to the readers. I am sure there are many out there who are dumbfounded by the headings printed in this issue. Up until now, this magazine has withheld publishing information covering major events which surrounded the occupation of the Royal Castle, placement of Her Majesty under house arrest, and other such circumstances of pertinence in an endeavor to uncover the Intelligence Division's dark conspiracy. The Liberal News sincerely apologizes for the abrupt coverage, and in addition asks that the readers understand our decision in this matter. Editor-in-Chief. Alan Richards' plan. The young founder of the Intelligence Division, behind his humble facade there lurked a calculating schemer, enacting a carefully planned coup d'etat. Richards' plan all began through the utilization of the Intelligence Division as a personal recruitment tool to amass a group of senior military officers mired in corruption and illicit affairs. These actions allowed Richard to hold the heart of the Royal Army within the palm of his hand, for a time at least. General Morgan and other such incorruptible figures of importance, on the other hand, were forcibly bound, imprisoned, or otherwise restrained from interfering. Terrorist incident resolved. In some, the soldiers in blue uniforms were the perfect imitative deception with which to frame the Royal Guards. The goal of the incident itself was to secure certain test equipment and abduct Professor Russell, the leading specialist in augment research, but the background surrounding this event is still under investigation by the Bracer Guilds. Yeah, we probably know they wanted uh, him to figure out the inner workings of the sealed area and the gospel. Royal Princess held hostage. After gaining control over a large majority of the army, Richard finally set his coup d'etat plan into motion. Placing Her Majesty's nephew, Duke Janan Von Orsleys, on the throne in her stead, much to everyone's horror, Richard assumed control over the royal family from the shadows. His plan was to press Her Majesty to abdicate the throne by taking Her Highness, Princess Claudia, hostage. But the Royal Guard, led by First Lieutenant Schwartz, saw right through the machinations. A fierce battle ensued between the Special Operations Unit and the Royal Guard over Her Highness, the Princess. However, being outnumbered, the Royal Guard's stand ended in defeat, and Princess Claudia was taken captive. Following the incident, members of the Royal Guard were branded as terrorists, and the unit was driven underground. With nothing standing in Richard's way, the success of his coup d'etat was only a matter of time. Unlikely heroes make an appearance. Amidst the chaos, an unheralded ray of light shone down upon the scene. A certain few individuals infiltrated the castle, and slipped past the security of the Special Operations Unit. Moreover, they succeeded in meeting with Her Majesty the Queen, who was under house arrest at the time. I have refrained from writing these individuals' names in deference to the Bracer Guild's request, but suffice to say, the Guild itself, which had been in the dark due to regulations sanctioned by the Intelligence Division, was for the first time able to grasp the direness of the situation, thanks to information acquired by those nameless heroes. 
After being apprised of the chain of events, the Bracer Guild would become a central force of opposition to the Intelligence Division. Liberation of the Queen The Bracer Guild rendezvoused with the estranged Royal Guard and set about liberating the Herb Royal Villa through a joint operation carried out under the Veil of Night, and beginning with Her Highness Princess Claudia, succeeded in rescuing the hostages. Then yesterday, using the tolling noon bell of the Grand Cell Cathedral as a cue, a rescue team primarily made up of braces and members of the Royal Guard pressed forward with a plan to storm the castle in a three-pronged attack from air, land and underground. As rangers of the Royal Army under the command of the Intelligence Division fell upon the liberating crew, a deadly battle with the Special Operations Unit erupted within the halls of Grantel Castle, and even spread to the lower levels. The struggle finally came to an end with the safe rescue of Her Majesty Queen Alicia, not after we fought Lawrence though. At roughly the same time, a unit of the Royal Army had come within sight of the castle seats its advance after being persuaded to lay down arms by General Morgan, who had escaped from captivity and rushed to the Royal City, okay, this is stuff that we don't actually know. The coup d'etat plan, which had been crafted by Richard and the Intelligence Division, had been, without a doubt, thwarted at the narrow brink of no return. The face of this nameless paramilitary unit. As is evident from the information presented in this article, the ambitions of the Intelligence Division were not shattered by the strength of a lone hero, but by the combined courage of a host of unnamed individuals, who in the end weighed the strength necessary to bring down the curtains on this intricate scheme. It has also been rumoured that a number of civilians stood shoulder to shoulder with the ranks of the Royal Guard and Braces in this endeavour. During this final struggle, the forces gathered together on the Liberator's side were, in fact, put in a situation which many would agree was insufficient in terms of strength to combat this foe. However, it was the courage of these civilians that compensated for this deficiency. As a reporter caught up in the mix, I was also one of these individuals who found themselves being borne up by this incredible energy. Among those who gave me the strength to carry on were two junior braces in particular, to whom I owe a special debt of gratitude, for without them, penning these articles would have been an impossibility. As we come to the end of these tumultuous events, I am once again overcome with feelings of reverence and thankfulness. The two individuals of whom I have spoken are scheduled to be awarded with their long-awaited status by the Bracer Guild at any moment. Please forgive my use of the following space for a personal message in consideration of the heroes who saved the Burl Kingdom. My heartiest congratulations to the both of you, and if you're ever in the mood for curry, it's on me, and I still love that moment so much. Like, if you don't read this, you'll miss that, but it's just such a great conclusion to the whole subplot with Niall, and it's just, oh, it's just so heartwarming, I love that. Society, Royal Guard reinstated. The Royal Guard, which had been branded as terrorists and forced underground, had its honour restored. The Army's Strategic Operations Headquarters also decided today that the Royal Guard will be officially reinstated, and it is expected that First Lieutenant Julia Schwartz and all of her fellow officers will be returning to their former units. Society, General Morgan promoted. The coup d'etat plan was carried out by a division of the military that should have served as a protective shield to the public. The Royal Army itself, unable to forestall this serious incident despite the threat it posed to the nation, will refocus its prime objective on restructuring and reorganising in order to prevent such future tragedies. To head that movement, the Royal Assembly has already proposed the leadership be awarded to General Morgan. The Royal Army has shown signs that it will comply with these demands, and General Morgan is expected to accede to the office of Commander of Strategic Operations. In addition, it was announced that former Colonel Cassius Bright, who acted as the General's right hand during the Hundred Days War, will be making a return, this time as an adjutant to the Commander. Let's just hope that he's not an adjutant um, offense type, because otherwise he'll be bugged and have a terrible chill strike rate. The former colonel had, after the war, resigned from his post and transferred his considerable talents to the Bracer Guild. Society. Mystery of the Tetracyclic Towers. Yesterday afternoon, numerous reports came in from all over the kingdom in witness to a mysterious light. It has been said that a beam of light shone from the tops of the Tetracyclic Towers. We are presently awaiting an investigation into the matter, as no further details are known at this time. And on that note, we end the news articles for this game on a perfect sequel hook for the next one. And there's also Anton and Ricky here. <laughs> well, yeah, you got rejected horribly, so no fun for you. Oh yeah, the Empire has its fair share of weirdos. I'm certain we'll be meeting a lot of them later.
Unfortunately, we can't go into the Erebonian or the Calvardian Embassy. So with that, that is everyone we can talk to. Once you agree to stop at the rest area, that will set you on track for ending the game. So if there's anything else that you want to do, make sure you do it now before you examine there. And on that note, I will see you next time for the ending to this game.